Dr. by Dr. Federica Merazzini uh, from uh, uh, Pavia, Italy, on a new form of inherited thrombocytopenia, ETV6 related thrombocytopenia. Never judge a book by its cover. That's a fascinating <laughs> title. Can you tell thank us more you. about it? <laughs> Open the book for us. <laughs> I will. Good morning and thank you for the introduction. I'm going to show you and share with you some important findings that we made in studying patients affected by this new form of a methodological disorder that affect platelet count. And as you can understand by the title of my presentation, <coughs> is much more dangerous than it seems. Let me spend some more about what inherited thrombocytopenia are. First of all, they are familiar disorder, and they are characterized by low platelet count. As you can see, and, and as you know, platelets are small blood cells, but even if they are small, they are fundamental for hemostasis. In fact, our patients often present with bleeding complication, but the degree of bleeding symptoms is usually mild. That's the reason why uh, everybody thinks this disorder are not so dangerous and are benign condition. Is that true? In 2015, together with other groups, we described this new form of inherited thrombocytopenia due to germline mutation in the TV6 gene. So we call it ETV6-related thrombocytopenia. Obviously, it's a methodological disorder characterized by low platelet count. It is inherited, so it is transmitted by one of the parents. That's what we call autosomal dominant inherited manner. They have got mild bleeding symptoms, our patients. And there are no morphological or functional abnormalities of platelets that can guide us toward the diagnosis. Usually, inherited thrombocytopenias are characterized by very large platelets, even giant platelets. But we found out that there is a higher risk of developing blood cancer, and in particular, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. That's the incidence rate of acute lymphoblastic leukemia in our population of ETV6-related thrombocytopenia patients compared to general population. I will translate what you are seeing here. It means that almost one out of a hundred patients affected by ETV6 RT will develop surely acute lymphoblastic leukemia every year, while in general population, one out of 10,000 people will develop it. So what should we do? Of course, we have to suspect ETV6-related thrombocytopenia every time a patient has an autosomal dominant inherited thrombocytopenia, but without platelet macrocytosis. We have to confirm the, di the diagnosis using genetic analysis. And much more importantly, we have to program an appropriate follow-up regimen. Since acute lymphoblastic leukemia does occur in time of months and not days, it's reasonable to perform blood cell count and peripheral blood smear evaluation every six, 12 months. So this is my take home message for you. When we are talking about ETV6 related thrombocytopenia patients, we must pay more attention to this hidden but very dangerous risk of developing blood cancer so that we can define prognosis and personalize follow up regimen than to bleeding complication which are rare and usually do not affect the quality of life of our patients. I finished. If you got some question for me? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank opened you. the book for us. And <laughs> my question is, is this openly communicated with the patients and the parents? That's the point. Uh, yes, it, um, psychological consequences are important. We have to make some uh, counseling just when we acquire the consents the consensus for the genetic analysis, we have to make patients aware of the risk. And also, uh, if they want to have mm, children, or uh, if they're going to have um, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, then we must not search for a donor inside the family. So they have to be aware of everything. Right. I think right. it's challenging, I know, but it's important that they, are, they sure. be aware of that. Sure. And maybe that is going to be written in the last chapter of your book, but what is the underlying cause of this coincidence? Do you have any clue there? 
Well, you know, um, ETV6 uh, is a transcriptional repressor involved in a, in, a, in a hematopoietic regulation, and it is found to be um, involved in a lot of hematological malignancies. Well, uh, it's the first time germline mutation have been discovered in here, but it is known to be mutated with somatic mutation or translocated, uh, RANX1 and ETV6 translocation for uh, ALLL in childhood. So maybe there's something in the hematopoietic differentiation and maturation that can affect both uh, um, platelet and the other cells. Right. Right. Yeah, impressive. Any further points? Yes, please. Can you get the mic get the microphone there? What is the incidence of this kind of immunothrombocytopenia? And, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I say uh, in our thrombocytopenia, a rare disorder, <laughs> uh, but in our cases, is one of the most frequent forms uh, of inherited thrombocytopenia. It's just like uh, almost 5% uh, in our population. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I'm. No, it, it's among inherited, among inherited thrombocytopenia. You know, the most common is myosin 9 all over the world. Then you've got uh, Bernasolier, bialelic, and monallelic. Then you've got plenty of other forms. So in our cases, it's a, it's a cohort of 20, 20, uh, sorry, <laughs> 274 <laughs> pedigrees with fami uh, familial thrombocytopenia. It's just like 4 or 5% uh -huh. in our cases. It's very rare. It's okay. the first time we described the, um, uh, a lot of families, but a lot means seven families, okay. 20 subjects affected okay. all over the world now. OK, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Any further questions? If not, thank you very much.